Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, or Entrepreneurs International Network, and I'm super excited for having an amazing and beautiful speaker for today, Virginia Muskies. So Virginia will discuss how to generate $100,000 and more by referral, but before Virginia comes to our virtual stage to discuss her insights, we want to briefly talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking sessions during our Q&As and Gratitude Circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So to see the recording of all the past events that we've had, you can visit our official website. It's www.eintalks.com. So there, you will also be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for 90 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes, and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes, and you will receive a private chat reminders of the time left for your talk. And after that, we'll have a 15-minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker for today, Virginia Muskies. Virginia Muskies is the creator of the referral Alchemy. It's a secret practical magic for turning their network into gold. So solo entrepreneurs hire her to show them how to triple their revenue one third of the time without the hassle of complicated funnels or the expense of paid traffic. And so I'm more than happy to have Virginia on our stage to share with us her amazing talk and how we can benefit for our business. Virginia, the virtual stage is all yours. All right, so Kesha, I need to be able to share my screen if you don't mind. It looks like you um, disabled that, so you might have to like make me a co-hosty person or something along those lines. Yep. And so while while we're getting that squared away, for those of you that have your camera off, I totally appreciate if you are multitasking and you'd like to, um, I don't know, maybe cook dinner while you're, uh, <laughs> you know, while you're listening in. But if you would be so encouraged as to put your camera on and participate, I would really love that if we were in a room together, uh, we would be doing, you know, call and answer chants and those sorts of things. But we're going to use the chat for that. And I'd also love to invite you to find the reactions button um, in your toolbar so that when I ask you for a thumbs up, you can find your virtual thumbs up. So while I get my slides up, how about if everybody practices finding your virtual thumbs up, your happy hands, your smiley face? And uh, pick your favorite emoji and go ahead and, and pop that up. Thank you, Joshua. That's awesome. And so um, what I really would love to do is just to be able to see everybody, number one. And um, let's see, are you, we're not seeing, are you, are you seeing the slide, Kesha, or you are? Okay, great. Yes, very clear. All right. So, um, yeah. So when I ask people to, you know, kind of, let's see where it says enter full screen, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so if you would be so kind when I'm, you know, asking for a word in the chat or something along those lines to get ready, poise those fingers over the keyboard and participate, it just adds to the energy of the room. Also, the more you're on camera, the more the people in the room will be able to observe and remember you and you will be a real person and they will be inclined to network with you and connect with you um, after the meeting. So that's just a pro tip from a, a person who fancies herself a famous networker. And for some reason, my slideshow has decided to not work. So so let me get in here and try again to figure out why that isn't working. Hello. All right. I'm going to try one more time to make this happen. Here we go. Share the screen, play the slideshow from the start. And now you should be able to, uh, to see that. And hopefully I'll be able to, there we go, click. 
All right. So what I want to talk with everybody about in the next 45 minutes or so is every entrepreneur's dream. And that entrepreneurial dream is to have a steady stream of clients that are ideal for you, that they want to pay you everything that you are worth and they want you to have everything that you want to have. And they love your business and they love sharing you with other people. And the key to that is to develop a dependable network and to remember that your success is not going to be determined by the breadth of your network, but it is going to be um it is going to be determined by the depth of the relationships that you create with those people. So the most successful people building a business by referral are more concerned first about building relationships and then the money, the influence and the money follow. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to build that dependable network that then provides you that steady stream. I call my process the referral alchemy secret, and I have taught hundreds of entrepreneurs how to create a hundred thousand dollar referral funnel that powers their business so they can have the freedom that they want to do the things that they love. There really is no point being an entrepreneur if it isn't to have time freedom, financial freedom, and energy freedom to live a life that we love and to have the impact that we want to have in our life and in our community. And that is what the referral alchemy secret is all about. So today I've got some practical magic for you to teach you how to turn your network into gold so you can do what you love. I predominantly work with experts in all fields. Most of them show up and call themselves coach or consultant or sales professional. But the bottom line is if you are a solo entrepreneur, or a small business owner who is also the rainmaker, you're responsible for going out there and generating business, this is a process that will work for you. Most experts are facing one of three different kinds of challenges. So the first one is they're trying to build a business, so they're using networking, but they're going out networking and not seeing any return. Basically, they're going out, they're going to networking events, they're collecting business cards, they're collecting emails, they're collecting contact information, they're building their LinkedIn profile, but the money has not yet started flowing. So that is one of the, that's one of the problems that is typically, um, being experienced by the people in my network and that work with me. There's another group of people that are out there networking and they feel like they've built this really great network and they are, they have great relationships. They're very cordial with a lot of people and they're doing a lot of giving, but they're not get, did, doing a lot of getting. So they're out there helping other people. They're living by giver's gain. They're living by Bob Berg's go-giver. They're living by Zig Ziglar's helping enough other people get what they want, but they haven't quite started getting what they want in return. And the third problem that a number of people that I work with have had is that their networking is working. They are making money but it's either producing insufficient or inconsistent results. So those are the three stages of building business through relationship that most people find themselves in. And the referral alchemy secret can absolutely help with all of that. I'd like to give you a really quick uh, context for who I am and why you might want to listen to what I have to share with you today. Uh, I am Virginia Muskies. I am uh, the referral diva, and I've been working in the referral uh, referral world for over 20 years. I've built countless businesses by referral, and I've helped many, many others do the same. I am uh, a wife. I've been married to my husband, Victor, for 35 years, and together we own two Business Network International franchises. That's BNI, for those of you who are familiar. Um, I've been a BNI member for 25 years. I owned a coaching company uh, that was founded by Dr. Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, called the Referral Institute. And when the Referral Institute closed down, I opened up Master Connectors in 2017. So I've been teaching referrals for a very, very long time. And, uh, and I love it. I absolutely love helping people build their business this way because I believe it is the most cost-effective, most time-effective way to add $100,000 or more to your business. Um, I discovered the secret that I'm going to share with you today when I worked for a 
local to me say, uh, education company called Sylvan Learning Center. And I was hired by the owner of the Sylvan Learning Center to create and grow a contract services division selling tutoring services directly to schools through a government program known as No Child Left Behind. Now, these services were predominantly sold in the U.S. urban market, and um, you're all looking at me, so you know I don't exactly look urban. And so it was a real struggle for me because I didn't really have a lot of connections there, and there were a lot of local mom-and-pop tutoring companies that were having a lot more luck than we were. So what I learned to do was to create influence by creating common ground and by creating networks of people that could help each other. And as I created those networks of mutual support, I became a trusted advisor and an influencer in that, in that region. Over time, I taught other directors that we hired on how to do what I was doing. And in 2005, when I took the position, we had zero dollars in annual revenue. And in 2011, we closed two point five million dollars in revenue, 100 percent through referral and word of mouth without any tech and without a single dollar in ad spend. And that is when I was approached uh, by a, a mentor of mine who said, you really, you taught 10 people how to do this in this business. I think you really ought to consider working with CPAs, financial planners, insurance agents, coaches, consultants, experts, and teach them how they can build a quarter million dollar business using the systems that you discovered. And that's really how I got into the coaching space. I call my process the referral alchemy secret, and let's go ahead and get started. There are three challenges that I just outlined earlier, and I'd love for you to pop into the chat for me. Uh, which one of these are you? Are you a number one? You're out there networking, but you're getting nothing, like no feedback, no juju, no nothing. Or are you someone that's out there, you're building a network, you, you kind of know how to network, you know what you're doing, but you're giving a lot and not receiving enough. And or are you one of the folks that, you know, you're making some money, but it's either not enough or it's inconsistent. So just take a minute for me. Type it in the chat. Steve, thank you. You're a one. Sandra, thank you. Urvash is a two. Awesome. Uh, George is also a two. Th okay. Awesome. Stefan, Stefan is a three. So we've, uh, we've, Ah, James hasn't started yet. James, congratulations. You are so in the right place at the right time because I'm about to teach you how to avoid all the mistakes so you do it right as you come out the gate. So um, thank you so much. Leslie's getting ready to start as well. Perfect timing for you all. This is great. So let me go ahead and start with how do we resolve the first problem? You're networking a lot, but you're actually not making money. Well, this is the situation that Matt, I was just talking about. Matt, um, I think I'm going to, Steve, I'm going to, this is the guy, Steve, that I'm going to introduce you to. He was out there networking ad nauseum for about 18 months. And in 18 months, he had managed to land one client. He had zero referrals. He found that person. He tripped over them by accident. And he had zero prospects in his pipeline. And here's why. What he didn't understand was this. This is Chet Holmes, Buyer's Pyramid. It comes from a book. If you're, if you're a book reader, here's your book recommendation. Um, Kesha, maybe you can pop this in the chat for me. Um, it, the name of the book is The Ultimate Sales Machine. Uh, and it's by a gentleman named Chet Holmes. So here's the deal. Um, if, you had a, if you were sitting in front of 100 of your perfect ideal prospects, only about three of them would be, in a, would be sitting in a sense of crisis or urgency enough to get, their, to get their problem solved. And this is really funny because the example that I always give is buying tires, right? Well, when, when do you urgently need to buy a new tire? Well, when your tires are flat or you had a blowout, right? Like your tire no longer functions. It's really funny because a friend of mine right now is getting his flat tire taken care of because he drove into St. Louis with a nail in one of his tires. So he's out buying tires. He's in that 3%. There's another 7% of your perfect ideal buyers that are open to it. Like they know they probably should be doing something. For example, they know the tread on the tires is getting a little thin, but they're not in a real hurry because it's not going to snow quite yet. But, you know, they know that before the big first snowfall, they're going to need to get some new tires because they don't have enough tread to get them through the snowy season. So they're open to it, but it's June. There's not really yet a sense of urgency and they won't be in the buying position and buyer's urgency until we get closer to the real need. 
30% are not thinking about it. I call those people the unawares. They are the people that don't check their tire tread. So they have no idea whether or not they need to buy new tires because they don't bother to check it. Okay. And the idea here is the only way I can get them interested in buying is if I can make them aware that they need to check their tire tread. 30% don't think they're interested. Um, you know, they figure they bought 40,000 mile tires and it's only been 25,000 miles. So they're probably not all that interested. And they don't know that there maybe are other factors that could affect the wear and tear on their tires. And 30% have absolutely no interest. So what does this mean for guys like Matt who are out there networking and networking and networking and not getting results? Well, the thing is, what they're doing is networking for clients, which means they're in a room trying to find 100 people that might need their product or service. And for every 100 of their ideal prospect that they encounter, they're only going to sell Three. So in 18 months, what that tells me is that in all the networking that Matt was doing, he probably ran into 30 to 35 potential prospects because only one became had a buying urgency enough to work in his process. Okay. So again, the reason it takes so much time and the reason that it's very difficult to get results is because Everywhere we network, we're not necessarily networking in a big pool of 100 of our perfect ideal prospects. So if we're networking here and networking there and networking everywhere, trying to find prospects, we've got to make a list of 100 people that are actually potential prospects in order to get three of them to say yes. And that is just exhausting. So what is the solution? It's to network. Yes, go ahead and network for clients, but add into that networking for partners. What's a partner? Well, a partner is a professional that helps your client solve a problem that you do not. So what does that mean? I noticed we had a CPA on the on the call. OK, so you might be uh, looking to network with business attorneys, people that are helping people form their business entities, because once once they've formed their business entity, well, then they're going to need an accountant. So that person could refer all of the people that they're forming entities to, to you. That would be a partner. Why do we want to talk with a partner? We well, want a partner because not only will they find the people that are in urgent need, they'll also be able to ask the people that might be open to it. A simple question like the one I ask for my CPA. This is the question I ask every single business owner. Does your CPA make you money? And if they tell me, no, my CPA doesn't make me money, I say, I'd like to introduce you to Bob because Bob is an accountant who makes his people money. And pretty much everybody that's open, like, you know, they're, they're not wed to their accountant. They're pretty open to it. And that also works on some of the people that are not thinking about it because they didn't even think that, you know, well, how would, a, how would an accountant make you money? And I can tell them the stories of how Bob makes me money. Bob has made me over a quarter of a million dollars uh, in the last six years. So uh, when, you're, when your CPA makes you money, that's a really good deal, okay? So what does networking for partners do? It gives you a lot of leverage because now you're maybe looking for those buyers and they can find you those buyers, but they can also wake up and motivate those people that are kind of open, but they don't have a sense of urgency. They can light a fire under their tail and they can also wake up some of those people that are in the unaware category. And that will dramatically increase your opportunity. If you can only find three but a partner could find you nine or 10, then it's worth it to add partners to your networking plan. The search for partners should be a big part of your networking plan. This is also going to free up your time. And the reason that it frees up your time is this. Let's say you your goal is to have 12 conversations, 12 sales conversations a month. All right. And you go out and you prospect, you direct prospect for those 12 people. That means on average, you're going to find three, maybe three people that are going to have urgency. There will be seven people that might be open. And then there might be one or two people that are in that they're kind of unaware. So they're a little curious, but they're probably not going to buy. And once you have those conversations, about 25% or three of them will close. 
The statistics show us that it takes about four hours to find a prospect that will be willing to have a conversation with you, which means to get your 12 conversations, you are going to spend about 48 hours just finding those folks. Then you're going to have to have the sales conversations with them, which on average takes about two, maybe three hours in terms of getting them on the phone, getting them into the conversation and doing the follow up. So just working with these 12 prospects as it stands is going to take you again about 48 hours. That's six full eight hour days if you don't take a lunch or a bathroom break and another, say, 24 to 36 hours which is another three or four working days just to have the conversations. And you've spent almost two weeks, half of your working month, just finding the clients and having the conversations, let alone doing all the other stuff that you need to do to run a business. So it's no wonder that you're exhausted if you're in this stage. And what you really need is leverage. You need some people, maybe four good, solid referral partners who you spend about four hours a month with, you're teaching them how to work with you, you're um, looking at each other's databases, you're doing referral work with them, and they're bringing you two, three, maybe four prospects every single month and saying, oh yeah, I'm the business attorney, I formed five new businesses and three of those people want to talk to the CPA. And so what ends up happening there is that you end up, instead of spending 48 hours to find three clients, you're spending 16 hours to find nine clients, which means when you add networking for good partners to your mix, you can increase your opportunity by 3x, but you can save one third of the time. Or you can do it in one third of the time. So you can save two thirds of the time. And the really cool part about that is that those partners become really good friends. So not only are you making more money in less time, you're also creating more community for yourself and giving yourself a different level of support. And that's exactly what Matt did when he started uh, working with me. And coincidentally, Matt came to me referred by, you got it, my CPA. So uh, from no followers on LinkedIn, in about eight months, he had almost 1,200 people following him on LinkedIn. He's producing great content. He uh, has over 500 LinkedIn connections. He picked up three new clients by referral. He has one referred prospect in the pipeline. He has a pretty high ticket, uh, a pretty high ticket product. And he's launching the Harvest of Poor podcast so that he can increase the number of potential prospects that uh, we'll talk to him about their businesses so he can land some potential clients. So that is how we work on the ne networking, but getting nowhere problem. You're just going to change your thinking and add, pri really prioritize looking for partners over just networking for clients so that you can get some leverage there. So the second problem that we're going to talk about today is your network isn't working even though you are delivering like like mad. So um, I remember talking to the founder of Business Network International, BNI, and uh, I asked him one time, I said, hey, I know that the um, prime directive of BNI is giver's gain. And what I want to know is what does the gaining start? Because I'm doing a lot of giving, but I'm not getting a whole bunch. And he said, well, if you're not gaining, you're doing it wrong. And that was one thing that I really had to learn. So how many of you right now, just by either show of a digital hand, you can raise your digital hand or give me a thumbs up or pop in the chat. Heck yeah. How many of you are ready for the gaming to start, but you don't know really, you don't really know how to start that. Like, thanks. Steve's got, yeah, I've got a lot of digital, a lot of thumbs up there. A lot of digital hands. That's great. Thanks, Sandra. Um, so, you know, this is really going to be your secret. So jump in on this one for me. If you feel like you're having endless cups of coffee and you're absolutely getting nowhere, the secret here is to find a way to turn those cups of coffee into collaborative conversations. So how do I turn a partner that I just met into a collaborator? Well, that's what happened to Jenny Bellinger. Jenny was a very successful direct sales professional. She sold um, costume jewelry uh, with a company called Park Lane. And about three or four years into her Park Lane journey, she was winning trips, winning prizes, and she started coaching a lot of what you, direct sales orphans. So they were people that maybe had lost their upline and didn't have anybody to train them. 
And so she started coaching them. And eventually it started eroding her ability to build her own business. But she was finding that she enjoyed the coaching a lot more than she enjoyed the selling of the jewelry. So she went to the company and asked if she could please uh, get hired on as a coach for these people that didn't have an upline. They said no. So she said, well, then I'll just be a coach on my own. I'll open up a company. She went, she got certified as a coach and she opened up her new uh, level up coaching business. Well, she had a network that was working for her really, really well when she was doing the direct sales. But the minute she changed her focus, she got no referrals. Instead of having referrals happen at every cup of with every cup of coffee, she was having lots of coffee and lots of supportive conversation, but she wasn't really making any money and she didn't know why. And that was about six years ago. And that's when she came to me. She came to me uh, through BNI. She was a chapter president and I was the chapter director. So she asked my advice and here's what we did. I said, look, Jenny, here's the deal. Uh, when you were with the jewelry company, they provided you with all the tools that you needed and all the training modules that you needed to teach hostesses how to be great hostesses and how to teach team members to be great team members. And you were using all of that to educate your referral partners. But where you are right now is that you don't have any of those tools and you don't have a process for training those people. So what we did was over a period of, of about six to eight months, we started developing a bunch of tools. The first thing we did was develop a mission, vision, impact statement. So people understood what she was gunning for. What were her goals? What was she creating? Why was she doing what she was doing? And what impact was she hoping to have with her business? Basically, who who did she want to help? And what was the transformation that she was promising when people worked with her? What was that impact she wanted to have? We made a list of who those team members, who those connectors could be, who was doing, who were the people doing business with those direct sales leaders um, that were helping them, but not coaching them on how to build their team and how to grow their business. She defined both psychographically and demographically her ideal prospects, the good, the better, the best, and the nots like the, I don't want them as a client so that she could show the people that were interested in helping her finding by finding her referrals could know what kinds of people she wanted to do business with and what kinds of people she wanted to avoid doing business with. She created something we call the LLA. That is what to look for. How do I spot somebody? What to listen for? What might they be saying and what to ask? How could I get them to agree that they have the problem that Jenny solves and want to do business with her? I'll tell you a little story about this. I was on LinkedIn, a woman, uh, I'm going to call her Tammy, reached out to me and her ob objective in reaching out to me on LinkedIn was to convince me that I wanted to add a side hustle to my life selling it at leisure wear through a direct sales company. Well, that is the last thing I want to do. I had an epic, an, um, a direct sales epic fail years ago, and I decided that isn't how I want to build my fortune. And, uh, but I asked her, hey, is this LinkedIn thing working out for you? Because Jenny taught me what to look for and what to listen for. If somebody solicits you, that's what to look and listen for. If somebody, and when they when they do it, ask them, how's it working for you? Is this approach working for you? Well, Tammy said, no, not really. And I said, I think I'd like to introduce you to Jenny because I think Jenny could help you. And that is what started to happen with all of her referral partners. They knew what to look for. They knew what to listen for. They knew what to ask. Jenny had armed us with ample testimonials and case studies that we were able, so we were able to tell the story because let's face it, facts tell and stories sell. So we were able to sell on Jenny's behalf by telling great case studies of the kinds of results that she was able to get using the processes that she uses. Then we used an introduction email template to do that introduction. So when I introduced Tammy to Jenny, I didn't have to make it up. I had the email. Now, there, if, for those of you that are um, wondering, oh my gosh, how do you get that or how do you do that? I have a couple of tools. So make a note to ask me in the Q&A what tools I use to help make email, introduce, email introductions simple and easy. We developed a direct mail letter. This is one of my favorite tools. Uh, we write a direct mail letter and we give it to one of our partners. And our partners go through their list of connections and find potential prospects that meet our good, better, best. They mail those letters out and then they follow up with a phone call to say, hey, could I make that introduction? It's a great way to warm up the network and you can get 10, 15, 20 potential referrals over the course of a year using a direct mail approach that we use in my community. 
Jenny also created a networking one sheet that had a lot of this information in one fast, easy place where her partners um, could actually have it all at their fingertips. And if you're interested in a networking one sheet and ways that I use that, also jot down uh, to ask me at the end of this, because if I go into it now, I'll exceed my 45 minutes. But I do have um, a tool that I use to create a digital networking one sheet that you can share with people and it'll go straight to their phone and they can keep it on their uh, on their wallpaper. And then of course we created some giveaways, some different kinds of reports and quizzes and lead magnets that as her referral partners, we can give to other people to introduce them to her. So we created all these tools and we created a training process so that when she sat down to have conversations, to have that cup of coffee, she was able to have a collaborative conversation and set the stage for that so that she could create referral, meaningful referrals for other people, but also get those meaningful referrals for herself. And that was where the giving came. Let's talk about the results. Jenny's worked with me for over the last six years. I think she's finally going to graduate. The I think she's finally move, like moving her way out. Uh, she's doubled her revenue every year. So imagine if you're a coach or a consultant and you're doing 20, let's say $25,000 last year, and you could double that this year to 50. Would that be good? What if the next year it was 100? What if the next year it was 200? What if the next year it was 400,000? Would that make a difference in your life? If that would make a difference in your life, put heck yeah in the chat for me, um, you know, to double your revenue year over a year and do it in a leveraged way where you don't have to do all the work. So, you know, I Steve and George and Mita and Matej, just give me a heck yeah. Somebody give me a heck yeah in the chat. So I know you're all listening, <laughs> that you're with me. I know. Thank you, Steve. I know I'm talking a mile a minute and I can't wait to hear your questions. Let me tell you a couple of other really interesting things that has happened to Jenny by sticking the course and staying the course with the referral alchemy process for six years. She now has the number one ranked podcast in network marketing in the world. It's called Badass Direct Sales Marketing. Jenny is the direct sales dom. She will whip your business into shape. It's kind of tongue in cheek. Um, as you can see, she's a purple haired wonder. She's the sweetest, like kindest, gentlest thing you've, you'd ever meet. But miraculously, this just happened recently and um, we were just blown away. Well, here's an even bigger thing. There's a very solid chance that she is going to stand on a global stage in Madrid in November because of this podcast. There were nominations sent out by BNI Global for uh, breakout speakers, member speakers during their global conference. Jenny was the most nominated speaker of all of the speaker applications that they had. And uh, you know how she got it? She had influence and she asked. So she knows how to receive. So she asked for what she wanted and she got it. And so there's a very good chance she'll be talking about how podcasting will build your network and make you a fortune. Um, and using the referral alchemy secret has been a big part of that for her. So we've talked about changing our mindset from hunting for clients to planning to find partners. And we've talked about how to start leveraging those partners, how to create the tools and how to create the training that will create the opportunity for you to get everything that you need from your partners. You see, most of your partners actually do want to help you. They just don't know how. And if we don't give them the tools and we don't train them, how will they be a de facto sales force for us? If you hired an appointment setter for money, you would train them what to do. And that's what we want to do for our referral partners. So let's touch on the last piece, stuck on that revenue roller coaster, that inconsistent revenue. So you never know where your next client is going to come from. When you're stuck on the revenue roller coaster, there's an awful lot of angst because you are super busy. You're trying to balance all of the marketing and the sales and the and the, the delivery and the marketing and the sales and the fulfillment. And it, it starts to get very uh, cumbersome to keep all the plates spinning. You see, we are sold that somehow this cycle of I market and I sell and I fulfill and I market and I sell and I fulfill, that it's effortless and easy and it's kind of seamless. But it's really not because we have to get those plates all in the air at the same time and keep them spinning. We got to keep them in the air. And so what it often feels like is more like this. It's uh, get a client, get a client. Thank you. Mita's like, heck yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, 
You know, it's get a client, get a client, get a client, get a client. Whoa, I landed a client. I'm super excited. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done with fulfillment. And now I have to start back on that, back on that, uh, that high, hard climb to find the next client. And that's exactly what was happening to Dallas. Dallas is from originally from LA. He's a professional mime. He's a professional speaker. He's a professional comedian. Um, and he's also a video producer. He moved to St. Louis to kind of, and opened his coaching practice to kind of slow it down with his family and to actually um, have more of a life. And so he came to St. Louis and he started networking like most people do. And those of you who are at ground zero, this is, this is where you don't want to start. So immediately start looking for partners, not for clients, right? So Dallas was just find a client, find a client, find a client, find a client, networking without a plan, lots of coffee, not much cash. Then he jumped into the digital marketing tactics. Well, let me clue you in on something. Giveaways, summits, speaking engagements, podcasts, like you got to have a way to point people to them. And if you're not going to use paid traffic, right? Paid ads, TikTok ads, then you're going to have to go organic social. And that takes a really long time. And if you're not going to do paid traffic or organic social, you need people. You need people to make your digital tactics work. So Dallas didn't have people. And so the digital tactics were, were frustrating him and they were really failing him. In 2021, he brought in $29,000 in coaching revenue, which was just shy of $100,000 of his budget. He needed another $100,000. So while he was building his coaching business by day, he was taking on video production projects by night to make ends meet. It cost him his health. It damaged his relate, put a lot of stressors on his relationships. And he was really hoping in 2021 to be able to buy a house and get out of a got out of renting. And he wasn't able to do it. And it was really, really disappointing to him. So here's what I told him. Listen, Dallas, if you want to get off the revenue roller coaster, do these three things. Number one, get clear. Number two, get a plan. And number three, just make the choice to get off the roller coaster and stay off the roller coaster, to have faith in the referral alchemy process that it will produce the results if you put in the time and you follow the plan. So what is it that we need to get clear on? Well, first we need to get clear on who do I really want to serve? Most people are casting way too wide a net. And although it is counterintuitive, the more narrow your niche, the more success you're going to have because people need to know what to look for. And anybody is not somebody I can find. What transformation, what are the outcomes your, your clients are truly investing in? So, you know, if you're manufacturing windows, uh, people don't buy windows. They're buying something else. Are they buying energy efficiency? Are they buying glamour, glamorous, you know, um, a look, for their, for their home, what is it that they're buying when they want those windows? And then finally, really getting clear on who's your team. Who are those people that are serving your audience? Now, in Dallas's case, his audience is introverted entrepreneurs. And the transformation is that he helps them build their business through speaking and taking the stage with confidence and, uh, and authenticity and not feeling like they have to be like Tony Robbins out there, super extroverted to be able to speak effectively and deliver their message. And then who are the people that help him, uh, that help those clients? Well, they're people like me. So uh, I refer lots of people to Dallas. He is one of my team members in terms of bringing referrals and I am one of his. So what's the plan? Well, I already clued you in on two parts of the plan. Two parts of the plan are create those tools that we talked about, create a training conversation to have with people, and then finally, create your own method for tracking the results because most people are spending too much time with folks that are not producing. Now, I discovered this about 11 or 12 years ago when I looked at my referred revenue tree and realized that two women had referred 40% of my revenue to my business, but I wasn't spending any time, any money, or putting any effort into the relationship. They just happened to really like me and they were sending me referrals. So I knew that I had to create a way to acknowledge 
them for helping me. So I called them and I was like, Hey, did you realize that you were, uh, you contributed 22% and 18% to the success of my business this year? Let's go on a trip. And I took them to wine country in California and we had a blast. So you want to find a way to track so that you can reward those people that are really helping you build your business. And then you've got to get off the revenue roller coaster and you've got to make the decision that you're going to put a plan. You're going to get clear. You're going to put a plan in place and you're going to follow that plan. You're going to focus, follow one course until successful. So let's talk really quick about how do you get off the revenue roller coaster. If you're ready to get off the revenue roller coaster, give me a digital thumbs up or a heck yeah in the chat. Let me know that you're with me. You're paying attention. I want to see those thumbs come up. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. I know George is finding his keyboard. I can't see everybody. I'm going to, I'm going to go to see everybody. This is awesome. Urvash has his thumb up. Sandra, Glenn. Oh, great. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh gosh. Ac oh, I don't even, I don't, Akin, Akinaton. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thanks for the awesome photo in the chat. It's great. Oh, all right. So here's how we're going to get off the revenue roller coaster. We're going to we're going to ditch an old approach. The old approach is what I call connection collection and list building. Most of us think of our networks as these puzzle pieces. We go out, we get names, we meet people, and then we hope and pray that somehow they miraculously think of us and bring us referrals. What we want to do is start to build relationship and go one step further. We want to build community. So rather than thinking of building a list or a Rolodex, think of your network a bit like a beehive. Build what I call a referral nexus because not all, all the people in your network are created equal. There is a sociologist, his name is Robin Dunbar, and he, uh, found that the average person can manage between 150 and 250 relationships. So your network is probably much bigger than that. Maybe you've got, you know, more than 500 connections on LinkedIn, but only about 150 to 200 are actually going to do anything for you if you show them your tools, train them, and track their productivity. Now, just like in a honeycomb, uh, the people in your network have different functions, they serve different purposes, and they have different resources, networks, and knowledges that they bring to the table. The queen bee, her job is to make more bees. You have people in your network that are responsible for just reproducing themselves, either being a client and bringing you a client or being a connector and bringing you connections. Um, you've got worker bees. They're the ones that are going out, they're networking, they're finding new people, they're bringing them, they're sharing them with you. They're helping you grow your network. They're making the honey for you. And then in the hive, there are drones and the drones are the, the bees that hang out with the queen, help her make some new bees. And then when the winter comes, guess what happens? They're not producing anything anymore. So they don't get to be in the hive when the resources get, get, uh, get slim. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone should push people out of their network so that they, you know, starve for the winter, but I am suggesting that we probably shouldn't be spending a lot of time with unproductive bees, and I think you would probably agree. So let's talk really quickly about five stages of productivity in your partnerships. The first stage is an acquaintance. Acquaintances are the people that we met. You have their contact information, and maybe you talked with them for a minute and a half in a breakout room on Zoom, or maybe you spent five minutes with them at a chamber luncheon having a quick conversation. If we hope that they're going to refer to us, we can give that up. They are not going to. Now, let's say we decide to have a coffee meeting with them, and we turn them into an associate. We learn about their goals. We learn about their business. We learn about their family. We learn about their hobbies. Maybe we learn about their interests or their skill sets or, or the things that they're proud of. And we get to know them as human beings and they become acquaintances. They're still not ready yet to be partners in our, on our team. They have to want to get trained to take on the next role, which is the advocate role. An advocate is someone who puts you in front of your audiences. In this particular case, Iman, who is part of uh, who is part of the Entrepreneurs International Network, is the one who said you should come speak for my people. Um, and so he did an advocate move for me. He put me in front of an audience. These are people that will find you podcast uh, podcast guest opportunities. These are people that will share your social media. These are people that will shout you out. Some of your people will move into this, what I call ambassador role. <clears throat> now, 
this ambassador role is the role that um, where people are bringing you team members. They're finding you team members. So you're a CPA and I become an ambassador by finding you lots of business attorneys that are looking to network and give referrals to a CPA. Pretty much that simple. And then you have your allies. Your allies, those are those people that I referred to before that you spend four hours a month with and that you create three referrals, uh, three referrals a month for. And when they get really, really good at it, they bring you clients almost 100% of the time that are pretty close to buying, as close to the buying, the, the buying seat as they can get without actually closing the deal. Not all referral bees are actually the kinds of bees that are going to help you build your business. Um, most of us are spending too much time with our associates and our acquaintances and not nearly enough time with our advocates, ambassadors, and allies. So if you are finding that you are on the revenue roller coaster, this is what Dallas discovered. He's like, oh, I'm spending a lot of time meeting acquaintances and turning them into associates, but I'm not doing the subsequent work of showing them my tools and training them how to promote, connect, and refer me so that they can actually work on my behalf. And when Dallas started spending more time with his advocates, his ambassadors, and allies, that's when the business started to take off. So there were three steps that you want to take in order to cultivate your nexus. And we've already talked about them pretty much. So let's really quickly review and summarize. The first thing that you need to do is connect. You need to network, go find new people. You need to network your network. That is, I found you, who do you know? And then you need to work your network. You need to take those tools and training and, and those tracking, and you need to convert those people into advocates, ambassadors, and allies. So you need to work with those people to see who you can move up into those productive parts of your network. The next part is you need to collaborate. Once you find those willing connections, the people who really want to help you, you've got to have the tools, you've got to train those partners, and you've got to track the results so that you can spend the right amount of time with each of those people. And you can focus your time, your energy, and your resources on rewarding and helping more the people that are helping you most. And then you've got to curate your network, constantly curate your network. Maya Angelou said, people are always teaching you uh, who they are, believe them. Basically, people are rarely what they say and they are always what they do. So if you have broken out the tools and you have trained them and they are doing nothing and they're, they're just, you know, they just want to have cups of coffee, but they don't actually ever bring you a connection or a referral and they never actually find you a stage or shout you out or, or do anything for you, they're in your associate pool. And if you spend too much time with them, you are going to continue to have inconsistent revenue. You've got to spend your time with the people who are acting like advocates, ambassadors, and allies. And that's what Dallas started to do. So a year later in 2022, Dallas brought in $110,000 in his coaching up from $29,000 the year prior, which was a 372% increase in revenue. He ditched the video production projects and he was able to get back in shape, start hanging out with his kids more. He's got three boys start hanging out with his wife more, which was really good for his relationship. And they were able to purchase a new family home. So now Dallas has a consistent revenue stream, a consistent dependable income stream that affords him the ability to do the things that he loves, which is spend time with his family. So let me ask a really quick question. How's everybody feeling right now? You know, pop it into the chat. Does this make sense to you? Do you feel enlightened? Do you feel hopeful? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel terrified? <laughs> like, how are you all feeling? Give me some, give me some feedback here in the chat. All right, good. Here, I'm going to pull up the chat really quick. Enlightened. Oh, thanks, James. James likes the 5A uh, concept. Um, Angel thinks that this has feels that this is very helpful. Um, Urvash feels like he's got direction. Steve is feeling good, excited about the prospects. I love it. All right. So I have a quick invitation for you before we go to Q&A. Uh, I am starting a boot camp. It starts on Monday, June 15th, and it's 
part self-study, it, it supported self-study, and then we're going to have some get it done time. So if you would like to discover the three easily implementable strategies for expanding your network and your influence that I taught Matt and really figure out how to put them into practice, this could be an opportunity for that. You can start building your referral funnel toolkit. So we'll get a couple, I'm planning on getting people a couple of tools created so that you can actually go out on a Monday morning and start, start knocking them dead. And um, I'm going to help you design and start building your own nexus. So we're going to take everything that you've got and we're going to organize it into those buckets. And then we're going to create plans for how to move those people up as soon as the boot camp is over. Because the real key to referral alchemy is knowing what the right things are and doing those right things with the right people in the right amounts for the right amount of time and learning how to give and receive. And a big part of the boot camp is trying to figure out like, what do I need to receive and how do I ask for what I need to receive? So let me really quickly um, invite you to the Get Connected Boot Camp. You'll learn how to create a referral funnel that makes all your marketing tactics work. And I have two levels of opportunity for you. Um, one is um, the $97, which will get you 30 days access to the training modules, June 15th to July 15th up to five personal laser coaching calls with me and the opportunity to attend our uh, get it done implementation sessions. Those are going to run July 11th through July 15th. And we're going to go for 90 minutes um, each day. So it's not going to be like a big, it's not like five whole day things. It's just 90 minutes each day. So if you'd like to do that, here's the QR code for that. If you'd like to get some extra support, you can go VIP That'll give you lifetime access to all of the training modules for as long as we hold the course. You will have unlimited access to me for the 30 days of the boot camp. We'll be doing a VIP mastermind session on July 3rd, where I bring all of my trained referral alchemists to the table. And we are going to remove the biggest bottleneck that you feel is going to get in the way of you implementing your blueprint. Um, you'll be able to attend those calls and I'll be hosting a live event in St. Louis, Missouri, the 28th to the 30th of September. And you are welcome to come see us in person. We'll take you on a tour of St. Louis. It'll be really fun. Or it will be a hybrid event. So if you prefer to stay put and stay where you are, you'll be able to attend that online. So um, I'll drop that the, the actual link in the chat, or you can just use this QR code. And that should take you to the correct page. And again, if you're having any issues and you want to do it, but the link isn't working or the site isn't working, remember, I promise low tech, you can just email me at Virginia at masterconnectors.com and I'll take care of it on the back end so we don't get all hung up on the tech working. I also believe that fortune favors the bold. So in every offer that I make, I have some fast action bonuses. So when you uh, take advantage of this by midnight tonight, Pacific, uh, I'll give you a free 30 day membership in my referral alchemy network. And here is what you get. Uh, on June 12th, you'll join us for our referral alchemy roundtable, where you'll be in networking with a group of six to eight like-minded professionals, and you'll have a 10 minute spotlight of your business and have the opportunity to share resources, knowledge, and networks with uh, like-minded folks. On June 19th, there's a pick my brain uh, session where you'll be able to come in and ask me lots of questions and also ask questions of the, these folks um, who are just some of the people in my group that are currently using um, all of my tactics. So sometimes it's just nice to hear from people who are in the trenches and not hear from the master. And then on the 26th, we'll be having a an Ask the Experts call. This month, the call is about the power of podcasting, uh, being a guest and being a host to build your network, your influence, and your income. And uh, for those of you who decide to go VIP, we will cre create your very own professionally designed referral one sheet, and you will have that by the time we come up to um, the get it done stuff. So I'd like to get it done for you before the referral roundtable, but... Uh, depending on how many people we have come on board. I don't know how quickly our graphic design team can get them done, but it'll be first come, first serve. So that is what I have for you guys today. Here's the QR code one more time for the 97. Do you guys want to grab that? And there's the there's the 197. I think that'll take you, that'll take you to a page where you have your choice. You can choose right there on the page. And uh 
And there we go. I'm just going to let it go at that because my 45 minutes is up. So I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to go to Q&A. So Kesha, let's do it. All right. Thank you so much for that informative talk, Virginia. Now that I was so fast. <laughs> yeah, but very clear. <laughs> yeah. So now let's head on to our question and answer portion. We encourage the audience to ask their questions by raising their hands on their screen or just using the hand raise feature here on Zoom. And if you are called by the speaker, we will unmute you. So you may start raising your hands now. I was so thorough, there aren't any questions. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be sending out a replay, Kesha? Yes, we will be sending out a replay after this call, and uh, we will be sending out the web, uh, the link for that. So if nobody else has any question. Okay. Aha, James has a question. Uh, well, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, I was, I was feeling a bit shy, but anyways, just got to get over it. Don't be shy. Over. I don't, I listen, even if I could bite, I can't because you're really far away. <laughs> so. yeah. I guess the, the question I have is um, I, I get, like uh, the people that you're coaching right now, um, I guess what type of businesses are they in? And what I mean by this is like, what kind of segment are they mostly in like services, like coaching? Can you kind of uh, unpack that? Sure. So mostly service-based industries. I have worked with, um, I've, okay, I've worked with a carpet cleaning company. I've, uh, I've worked with a kitchen and bath design company. Uh, Jenny Bellinger is a direct sales coach. Uh, Dallas is a communications coach. Matt works at a, a pretty high level um, in what he does. His thing is really interesting. So he's a business consultant and he helps um, businesses solve all of their team problems without anyone ever speaking a word. It's the most amazing thing. In an hour and a half, he can solve some of the stickiest problems ever. So he removes business bottlenecks from um, harvest to poor based industry. So beverage industry businesses. Mm, let me think here. Oh, um, I've got an attorney that I'm coaching. I've coached many attorneys, many CPAs, lots of engineers, lots of architects. Um, I, so a lot of experts and people that are using their expertise to coach people. And there are two kinds of parts of this that I think are really interesting. And so if you're um, kind of a um, kind of a process person, like architect, engineer, CPA, attorney, that's kind of where your brain is at. This is really great for you because it's a process. So you're like process. I love process and it's documented and I have a book, like I have a, a, a manual and like there's a process. Okay. For people like me that are super like, well, like ADHD here, there, shiny object, whatever. It's great. Cause you know what? There's a process and it's all about people. So it on either side, it's like, you're either a super people person and you need a process cause you're running around like or you're a, you're a process person and you need a process so that you can people effectively. So it, it's really, it works regardless of your natural, your natural bent. What is not a good fit for me is somebody that is a brick, that's brick and mortar, unless it's brick and mortar, like a physical therapist. I helped a physical therapist quadruple his revenue and sell his business at, um, at a two and a half on EBITDA. So, um, you know, he's delivering a service. It just happened, the personal trainer, you, you, you need a brick and mortar, that kind of thing. But like, I probably, you know, somebody having a, a like a restaurant, probably not. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've worked with a martial arts dojo. So I, I yes, everybody, <laughs> you know, the one thing is e-commerce. I don't know, like low, I'm really low tech and no paid traffic. So if you're building an e-commerce business, then by all means, let's have a conversation, but it won't be me that coaches you because I am low tech and I don't do like ads and paid traffic and that kind of stuff very well at all. I suck at it. So that's, don't come, come to me for the referral, but don't come to me for that coaching because I'm not going to offer it. Okay. Does that help James? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, what do you do? What is your business? Uh, well, I kind of mentioned earlier, it's uh, manufacturing uh, windows. The manufacturing windows. Yeah, so it's a brick and mortar. 
So. Yes, yeah, so we would need to have a conversation about that because the, depending on if you're trying to sell the wholesalers, like depending on what you're trying to do, um, there it might work. But I would want to have a I would want to have a further conversation with you. So I invite you to email me and say, hey, can I have can we have that conversation? Um, and then depending on your goals, and you probably want to have your friend on that call too, so we can have an actual conversation about what are the goals in the business and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the last thing I wanted to point out, uh, one thing actually I really appreciate about this call and actually you, you did a presentation on the five A's. And for me that like the whole process aspect is I am quite uh, process uh, oriented, but it was just like that, uh, I guess that logical sequence of like moving up uh, people in that ladder. So thank you for showing that. Yeah, and by the way, they don't all move. Just to be very clear, just to be very clear that buyer's pyramid that I showed you guys, is about the way they move, right? So about 3% are going to be in that ally category, about 7% are going to be in that ambassador category. Like you're going to you're going to see it stratify. And if they're in that bottom category, you're and they're not moving, they're not going to move. And one of the reasons we don't make a lot of money is because we keep trying to we keep trying to push people up the hill. And what you need to do is walk past them and keep hiking. <laughs> you'd be like, "Okay, you sit there on that rock." But here's a bottle of water. See you in six months and keep going. Uh, but we tend to we tend to beat dead horses a little too much when we're networking. Um, Urvash, thanks for the question, James. Urvash. Uh, hi, Virginia. Thank you so much. It's a very interesting, uh, very interesting discussion. And um, I have a question regarding uh, the five A's that you shared, and and I think you did you did touch point uh, when you talked about how it relates back to the pyramid. Um, and I think that does make sense. Uh, my question is, um, as I did mention that I am that number two uh, person, right? I, 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 have, I, I have built a network. I'm meeting a lot of people, um, you know, going through the multiple hundreds and then trickling it down to the tens and trying to figure out the threes. Um, so which means that I have a lot of um, people I know who are categorized as associates. Mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you move them up the 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 30% uh, or um, the 7% to the advocates and and the ambassadors? Because what's happening uh, in my case is um, I am from the financial industry. So I I, I do financial advising. Um, and we we start with, right off the bat that you know we we have these uh, services that we can offer to you. Um, and then we get to know the person to be able to give them some service. But then what happens is a lot of times we don't hear back, right? There's, uh, they completely disappear uh, sometimes. So how do we, since we're already getting to know them, since we're already building that relationship, what more does uh, one need to do to have certain amount of people move up to the ambassadors and the advocates. So where where um, from the from how you're presenting it, we're going to need to have a little bit of a clarifying conversation because it sounds to me like you're talking about how do I get a potential client, how do I get a prospect to move up the pyramid, and the ambassador ally thing is about partners, not prospects. So. Oh. Right. So prospects go from suspect. That means I see them and think they could use a financial plan yeah. to prospect. Oh, they realize they're in that they're in that top third of the of the pyramid. They kind of realize they maybe need a financial plan. And, you know, maybe they're kind of unaware and you made them aware. Or maybe they're like, yeah, maybe later. And maybe they're like, oh, crap. Now I really need something because I just inherited a bunch of money. Right. They have an urgent situation then you're moving them up that ladder and Chet Holmes deal is the one that starts. So if you're having trouble getting them to call you back and all that, that's a sales process issue. Yes, we cover that in my, like my year long program. So in my year long program, it's all about learning the sales process because I have to learn and document my sales process in order to teach it to George. So George can do my sales process with all his friends. So he can get them all the way to the 3% when he hands them over to me. So I don't have to deal with all that other stuff. So I have to have a, I have to have lots of clarity on the sales process to teach it to those partners. That's number one. 
On the other side, if I have partners and I'm just meeting with people and I can't get them to advocate for me or I can't get them to find, connect, I can't get them to do that, um, that becomes part of that creating the tools, creating the training and creating the tracking. So it would be a conversation around, well, what tools have you created? And if you said, well, I don't really have any tools that I or a training process to move my people up, that's where you want to start in, okay, I'm going to develop a couple of tools. I'm going to teach some people how to find me more people. And I'm going to, and I, you, it sounds to me like um, the sales process is also something that um, could be a, a, a challenge for you. So um, the answer to some of that is do the boot camp and see what you think and see how far that gets you. It's the cheapest way to ever do anything with me. Normally to spend that kind of time with me is like two grand, but um, I don't know. I just, I'm just doing it. I want to reach a lot of people and help a lot of people this year. Or so, uh, and I'm happy to do that. And I found a way to do it that makes sense for me and it'll make sense for you. So I would say jump in the boot camp, and we can have a lot of those conversations because it's going to take more than the uh, 22 minutes that we have left on the call for me to actually walk you step by step through all of that. But I think you need to, a big distinction in your brain is what is my customer pathway? from suspect to prospect, to customer, to client, and then to raving fan. Mm -hmm. What does that pathway look like? And what is my sales process at each one of those steps? And then what is my referral process? So they're two separate processes, but you've got to have them both in place. And that's part of that clarity piece. I think that makes sense. Does that help? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Angel. Hello, Virginia. Hello, Thank my dear. Thank you so much. This was fantastic, very informative. I took tons of notes. Um, I have a brief question first. So have you ever worked with professional speakers? Yes. To help them? Okay, so it's not a service, but you do work with professional speakers. I have worked with professional speakers. Um, I'm going to give you the caveat. Yes. So the normal way professional speakers get clients is that that cold email outreach thing where you like you like find all these event planners that are running the meetings blah 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 and you send them emails and you do 50 emails a week and blah, right yes um i i know people who have a lot of success doing that if i were going to get paid to speak that would not be how i would do it yeah and so one of the one of the professions that i that I often do not work with are real estate agents because there's like a real estate agent way and they don't want to break out of the mold. However, my way of working with public speakers is very different. And yes, I can network you to stages. I can show you how to network your way to stages, but it's so freaking counterintuitive that most of the speakers that I try to teach it to are like, oh, that's just not how it's done. Yeah. I don't like it. It works. Done. <laughs> it works. Okay. It works. I I um I worked really briefly with somebody um uh who was looking to get stages and I taught him two little tactics and um he's booked multiple stages and uh because he followed my advice and I he like gave me information, I was able to get him um a, an absolute full fee speaking engagement, eighteen thousand dollars. He flew to Florida, they paid him, he came back, and it was completely by referral. Um, so it is possible. It's just, it's a process and it's really counterintuitive. I have found for most of my certified speaking professionals that come my way, they, they just look at it and go, yeah, that's just not that, that won't work, but they never try it. So okay. can I email yes. you then specifics? And then you can let me know if the boot camp is relevant for what I yes, was looking absolutely. for. Yeah. So then my, my question that I hope helps the rest of the group is sometimes I go to a lot of events because I like to network. And it seems like all of my associate and acquaintance people always keep wanting to have coffee with me, mm -hmm. but they're not at the advocate, you know, the higher levels. I respect and I need all those relationships, but golly, I don't want to meet again with some of them. So how do you respectfully say, not a good use of my time, even though I'm not going to say that, but if you keep getting invites from people who you know they're never going to move up, you know they're never going to, um, I can't help them and they can't help me kind of thing, but they're friends and they're nice people. And well, I my, my question would be like, what evidence do you have that you can't move them? That would be number one. 
Um, for example, I'll give you an example. Take a list of all of them and go look, go to LinkedIn, be friends with them on LinkedIn and find out who they know. Is there anybody they know that you'd like a connection to? If there is, go ask them for the connection. Like sometimes people don't move because you have to understand when I'm teaching, I'm teaching, nobody's teaching it. You don't learn this in, on, in, in college. Nobody's teaching this. I met the, the head of the entrepreneurial studies department at Lindenwood University here in St. Louis. And I said, I'd love to come teach networking, business networking at the School of Entrepreneurship. And his answer to me was, why would they need that? <laughs> Okay, so if the Dean of Entrepreneurial Studies at Lindenwood College doesn't think networking is important for entrepreneurs, um, I do think he's a bit of an idiot, but that seems to me to be kind of a kind of odd, like kind of uh, that's sort of the state of things. And so the average business owner, what they've learned is I'm supposed to go out, I'm supposed to go to networking events, I'm supposed to hand out my business cards because, you know, business cards don't do anything sitting on my desk. Well, they don't do anything in somebody's trash can, in somebody's wallet, or in somebody's what I call bag of shame. So the bag of shame is the business, is the Ziploc baggie where all those business cards that you never followed up on are. Does anybody have one of those? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, first of all, I need to I need to introduce you to Daniel Rubenstein, who will take take all of those cards for you and put them into a usable data spreadsheet, and then we can talk about what to do with them, right? But just like any marketing tactic, if you don't have a call to action, a CTA, at, at the end of every coffee meeting, then that's why they're not doing anything for you. Okay. So number one, I challenge the notion that none of them will move. I think that you want to, if you haven't included a call to action, what, hey, what I'd really love is if you could help me with X, then, then you would know, then you would have more of an evidence base. Like, yes, I asked them to do these things for me and they don't. So then the answer to your question is I simply decline. And I, and I just say, thank you so much for thinking of me. My schedule is really hectic right now. And would it be okay if I got in touch with you later? Now, one thing that I do do that really helps me with that is twice a year, I host some sort of an, a big networking event and I invite everybody that wants to come to my networking event. It's usually at a restaurant and they can buy their own beer. Um, you know, like I don't pay for it. I just say, hey, come to the, we're going to go network. And then once a year, I hold a big party at my house and anybody that wants to come can come and eat my guacamole and we just go from there. So, um, you know, I make sure that they're loved on and they get a Christmas card and a birthday card. I use send out cards to, you know, program that. So I don't have to do a lot of the work, but you just tell them like, hey, thank you so much for thinking of me. You're delightful. And sometimes it's I'm like, I got, I've got time for a 15 minute zoom call. If you want to tell me what you're up to, is there something specific that you need that I can help you with? I can't meet with you. Is there something that you need? I like that. Okay. Right? Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Leslie. Fox. Okay. So that's the last question for, for today's uh, webinar. Last question. Okay. Thanks very much. Oh, that's great. You know what? I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, so first of all, my business that uh, will be rapid transformational coaching slash therapy using hypnosis. Okay. And, and when I start, I think I'm going to start simply with helping people who might want to change their drinking habits, drink more selectively or want to quit smoking. Okay. But eventually that may morph, but that I think I'm going to keep it simple. So that said, I'm still two months away from uh, graduating, um, but I'm trying to get a head start by do, attending these kinds of talks. I want to be able to talk like you because what we, when we are learning our uh, craft or our profession, we learn to be therapists, which is you know very kind of uh, nurturing and uh -huh. listening. But selling yourself is a completely different uh, conversation. And I'm finding that I'm having a hard time transitioning between the, oh yeah, listen, listening, tell, tell me more. And well, hey, have I ever got a solution for you, right? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. my, question, my question to you is, so you're offering a boot camp, and I heard in there that you have personal coaching. I think I need help with um, you know, how to tell my story, how to close, you know, how to get people, pique people's, pique 
people's interest so that they actually do want to buy. I find it difficult to talk about myself and how great my service is going to be. It just feels very uh, uncomfortable. Is that something that you can help with? Yeah, the good news is if you talk about yourself, you won't get any clients. So you can <laughs> let that go. Um, yeah. People want you to talk about them, not about you. Nobody cares yeah. about you. Trust me. Um, yeah. If you walk into a room and you feel shy, don't worry about it. Nobody's thinking about you. They're too busy thinking about themselves. We're all thinking about ourselves all the time. That's just how our brains work. Um, so yes, that's definitely something that um, that I can help you with. And it's also something that um, the community can help you with as well. So, um, you know, the boot camp won't really help you necessarily with, um, with what specifically you're talking about, but it will help you kind of think about how to structure a network, how to, how, what it is that you really want to build um, and how you want to structure your network. If you, what you want is look, Virginia, I need somebody to partner with me to help me build this, build my business. Then that's more of a coaching program. Like a, like that for me, that's more of a, let me hold your hand, maybe a VIP weekend, something along those lines. So um, if what you're looking for is like, I, I need to know how to structure my business. I need to know my positioning. I need to know um, what my promise is. I need to know how to package my stuff, how to price my stuff. What's my customer pathway? Like all of those things, then that would be like a VIP weekend. Um, and, you know, if you, and that would be a different kind of thing. So if you'd like to have a conversation about, okay, what is it that I need? Then I would say, let's have that conversation to kind of find out what that would look like and where you need to go individually to do that. But I help people start their businesses all day long, every day of the week. I take on four private clients a year. I've only got one right now. So I've got three spots available, just graduated two. So um, yeah. And the, the last, the last time I spoke on this, this call, um, Somebody asked me that same question, came to work with me, and now she's making multiple six figures two, two years later. So she was coming out of corporate. Um, yeah, uh, that's exactly my background is corporate, 25 years, but I've decided to transition. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yes, I'd like to have that conversation. So, so right now, grab my email address. And right now, before you end up, before you end the call, go ahead and email me and just so that we're connected and say, I'd love to have a call with you. Um, I do confess, I am really, I'm not so short on time as I thought I would be, but um, I'm leaving the country on the 15th. So if I, I'll try to squeeze everybody in before I leave the country um, for a couple of weeks, but if not, then we'll, you know, we can talk when, uh, when I get back. And I know you said you were kind of a couple months, a couple months from graduating, but we can, you know, it, it might be worth it to have that, have that conversation before I leave. So we can set things up if that's what you choose to do. Sounds good. So your email is in your, your little. Yep. Letter. It's Virginia at masterconnectors.com. So Kesha is getting anxious. I see, I see her, I see her twitching because there's something else she needs to do. Kesha, Kesha what's next? <laughs> no, not really. I was just wanting to say that if anybody else has any questions, they are free to, you know, reach Virginia at her email, right? Uh, the one that is on your screen. Yeah. And you might yes. want to put it on the chat box. Or you can use Marco Polo. If you guys don't know what it is, it's an app in the app store. Uh, when you get there, it'll have a little, it'll have a favicon that's a beach ball. And uh, you can find me on Marco Polo and it's asynchronous video communication. So if you prefer sending me a video to sending me an email, you can send me a video and, uh, and we can go from there. That's awesome. So thank you so much for those questions. So now we're on the last part of our event our takeaways in gratitude circle. So some has already shared their uh, takeaways earlier, uh, like snippets of it, but if you want to share more, we would love to hear you out. But if uh, there is uh, nobody else who would like to share, I wanna share my uh, gratitude to our speaker, Virginia. I'm so thankful that you have given us the time to despite your busy schedule, to uh, uh, to share with us your insight on our platform. It, it's Thank really you. helpful. Yeah, it's very helpful for all entrepreneurs right now that is here on our event. And uh, we would love to hear more of it from you. So I guess uh, everybody is also looking forward to have uh, a go at that uh, boot camp as well. So thank you very much, everyone. 
for showing up at today's event. Now, for our next events, we will inform you in advance at our meetup groups. So keep posted. And um, if there's nobody else who would like to share their takeaways, that is how we close our event. Once more, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Virginia. We will Thanks see you in our next event. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Call me, beat me, email me. Let's connect. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.